Hello and welcome to the third module of our SCT training sessions. In this module we will talk about the hardware implementation of the state configurable timer. This is the agenda. We will look at some basic principles of the timer and then we will do a walkthrough of the SCT block diagram to get a detailed functional view of the SCT subsystem. This slide recalls the basic features of a timer. There is a register which gets incremented at each counter clock cycle. The counter clock cycle can be divided down by a prescale register. There is an additional register called a match register which is used to compare the value of the counter. When those two values are equal, interrupts can be generated. Here we see some advanced functionality of the timer. The counter, for example, can be up or down counting. When a match event happens, the timer can stop counting, reset, continue counting, set or clear an assigned output pin, generate interrupts or generate a DMA request. When the timer is configured to capture a value, it can as well generate an interrupt or capture the value of the counter within a dedicated register. So the SCT is a timer which is enhanced by input capture events, signal output capabilities, interrupt events, a state machine which controls inputs and outputs over several cycles of the counter, and interconnections between all of these blocks. This diagram shows the SCT into its major components. There is a section dedicated to the clock inputs, which includes two prescale registers, one for each timer half. This can be used to reduce the clock rate at which the SCT timer runs. The SCT also has an option for using an external clock source for the counters. The counters, together with the match logic, provide the basic timer functionality, which means comparing the counter register to a specific match value, or capturing the counter value at a certain instant in time when a condition on a trigger input signal is satisfied. The advanced part of the SCT is provided by the right-hand side of the blocks. Here we can see the event generation logic. This block is used to define the hardware events, which can be dependent on inputs, match values, outputs, or also a combination of them. The defined events are also dependent on the state logic, and can make the state logic jump to a different state of the associated state machine diagram. All defined events are able to drive outputs, and can be configured to generate interrupts to the CPU, or transfer request to the on-chip DMA controller. So what are the building blocks of the SCT? The timer. There is one 32-bit timer or two 16-bit halves. The events. Each event can trigger a transition on the outputs, change the state, or change the counter status. States. These define the context in which the defined events are evaluated. This means, since an event is defined to trigger when the SCT is in a specific state, when the state machine is in a different state, that event will not be active. Inputs. These are signals which get evaluated by the SCT and might contribute to the generation of events. Outputs are signals generated by the SCT, but these might also contribute to generation of events. So, what can be sources of a hardware event for the timer? The first and most obvious one is a time-based value, which comes from a timer match. Timer matches are defined via dedicated match registers. Each of them has an associated shadow register, which can be written at any time by the software to change the match value. 
This value gets reloaded when an event limits the counter, meaning when an event resets the counter to zero. This happens, for example, typically at the end of a counter period. Note that there is also the possibility of holding off the reload of the match registers by setting a mask bit, so that the reload will not happen until the mask bit is cleared again by the application software. Other sources of event can be signal levels or a rising or a falling edge for either an input or an output signal. Additionally, an event can be defined to happen when a combination of the previous two is true. For example, a time-based value and a certain signal level or a certain signal edge or whatever combination of those options. So to recall, an event, when it happens, can drive an output signal, can make the timer state machine jump to another state, can start, stop, halt or limit a timer, can capture a timer value, can generate an interrupt to the CPU, or can generate a DMA request. States are of optional usage. Each 16-bit timer can have its own separate state machine. As mentioned, you can specify in which states a specific event has to be considered. At the end, states allow for an easy visual association between the behavior of the application and the configuration of the SCT. Note that there can be examples of configurations where states are not used, so all defined events would always be active and there will be just one entry state. The input signals can be up to 8 and the source for those signals can be inside of the chip or outside. All those inputs will be synchronized to the SCT input clock. The outputs can be up to 16 and these can also be evaluated to generate events on the following clock cycle. Note that 8 inputs and 16 outputs is the maximum specified, which is the amount of signals available, for example, on the LPC-1800 and LPC-4300 series of microcontrollers. For the actual number of available resources included within a specific SCT implementation, Please refer to the user manual of the specific device you are using. Finally, at the global configuration, separate prescalers can allow for different counting speeds on each of the two 16-bit timer halves. Also, the SCT clock can be provided via an external input pin. So to summarize, in this module we talked about the resources which the SCT makes available to the programmer. For more details about the internals in terms of register set, addresses, bit fields, please refer to the user manual of the device available from the NXP website. In the next module, we'll go through an example of using a state machine diagram tool to program the SCT for our example application. We will start by defining a state machine to generate a simple PWM waveform, extending it gradually up to a more complex setup which will cover the control of a brushless DC motor. Thanks for attending this training. Let's move forward to the next session.